All right, welcome to 24 hour, 28 miles, 45 minutes, 233 watt hours per mile. Okay. Yes, sir, e Bob. So, um, ah, where do I start? So there was, there was some, I guess they're right under the speed limit on Loman Ford. So it's not really slow, slow, but it's a little bit slower than other people can tolerate, right? So they're going around. Okay, fine. As we turn up on the Loman Ford, yes, we have a green arrow. Um, actually, we have a green light. Um, the pickup I'm behind looks like a beat up old piece of junk beater truck. He doesn't even have a back window in his truck. Anyway, he's going around the corner really slow. Okay, at first I'm going, an FSD had no reaction. Like, oh, this is okay. Seriously? Now, when I look behind me, the person behind me hasn't bounced out yet. Brake on us, see off, move the truck, move the car, go around. Gone, see ya. Now, I'll see him again later. This is just stupid. Okay. Um, today, somehow, when we're coming up on the construction zone where we go from two lanes to one, the, there's no passive-aggressive people coming up on me. I mean, they're far enough back, it doesn't matter what they do. Okay. FSD says, oh, it might be a good idea if we move over early, as opposed to waiting late. So he moves over early, cool, awesome, and the Toyota Camry comes right up onto my back end. And I look at him, and he must have known exactly what that look meant. He backed off. Okay, I mean, you have a choice. You can tailgate me and make me slow down, or you can stay off my back end and let me proceed at speed limit. Which one do you choose? Apparently he chose, let's go to speed limit, okay? Cool, awesome. Uh, somewhere in here we had a hand nag. I don't know. Why do we get hand nags? But whatever, it, it's there. Um, so Mr. Mr. Pickup with no back window, he comes up. He's pushing hard to pass me. I don't, I don't know why, but he does. He comes up to pass me. And as soon as he passed me, he shows right in front of me. Okay, maybe he gave me a little bit of room. Guess what? He's going to turn right up here. What? <laughs> Why'd you bother pass me if you're going to turn right? Okay, because he was in the inside lane and he's now in the outside lane. He left the inside lane open. Brake on FC off. Move the car. Pass him like that. I mean, I guess he can go home and tell his kids, Oh, yeah, I passed the Tesla in mile three today. Oh. Don't tell him about the part where that mile three flew by you two t different times today. Like you're standing still. Yeah, what's that? The only time you passed me was when I was following another car. Or not really following, but... No, actually, he did. He sped up. He sped up a fair amount. And all of a sudden, he's going 40, uh, 35. Okay, whatever. Peace and army. It, it is what it is. Um, I think there's a couple other times where I do a break on FT off to switch lanes while we're still on 1431. Once we get to Anderson Mill... Oh, I, I don't think I did a break on for this, but... As I'm coming up on the Anderson Mill and we're into the turn lane to go right, there's a Model S over there on the inside lane. And I see his turn signal on and he starts moving. I'm like, okay, no big deal. He's switching from inside to outside lane. Not a problem. All of a sudden, he's coming in front of me. Holy cow. Yes. Even Tesla drivers can be really stupid. I, I don't know. This is the point where I'd usually say, if only you had Tesla navigation to tell you when you're supposed to turn. But either he's too lazy to use it, or he's too stupid to. 
Yeah, it, it, it gets to be a nuisance to have it on your right. I mean, absolutely true. It gets to be a real burden to have navigation on. But navigation sometimes will detect problems for you. For those of you who use Waze, W-A-Z-E, um, you, you know that it'll detect traffic jams and reroute you. This navigation will do the same thing, although I'm not quite sure what he's basing his assumptions on. I mean, sometimes he'll show a section of road is red, and you're looking at it like, I'm the only car in this section. Why is it red? And sometimes it has more to do with traffic flow, right? The, well, they're doing 35 in a 35 zone. So that sounds green, doesn't it? I don't know. Whatever. Um, coming down Anderson Middle, most of it's pretty good. We come up to a point where FSD turns on his left turn saying we're about seven tenths out from the turn on the 183. He turns on his turn signal, moves halfway into the other lane, and then all of a sudden cancels it and starts going back. Now, brake on FCL, move the car into the left lane. Is it a stupid idea? I think it is stupid, but you've already signaled it. Commit to it. Did, did you look up the road and realize, oh wait, that's a stupid idea? Or, I mean, there wasn't a car pressuring you not to. Okay, whatever. So the makeup for it, FS, as we drive along, FSD detects a spot that's like a car and a half length long and cuts in front of some little blue car. Now that car kind of stayed back from, from then on. And I'll blame him. That was, was it legal? Yes. Was it less than appropriate? Yes. Okay, whatever. Um, from here on, it's, it's kind of smooth sailing. When we finally get into the section of 183, where they slow down, or just before then, I got FST to move into the outside lane. So there was an Aston Martin uh, Vantage. Like I could see him coming up from way far back. And I knew what he was going to do. He's going to take advantage of the fact there's no cars in the outside lane, at least right up until the car that's just a little bit in front of me. That's what he's going to run down that road. And I figured he's either going to slide in behind me or maybe hope that there'd be enough separation where he could slide in front of me. Either way, he's not going to go much further after that. But I knew that he was, he was going, Wah! and sure enough, he did. <laughs> Whatever. And after a while, I finally, he finally got far enough ahead where I could slide in behind him in the outside lane. No doubt he's going, oh, well, this Tesla, it, it, it was blocking me, but finally it moved over. Well, I had to wait for him to finish this stuff before I could move over. I mean, if he wasn't coming up, I would have already been in the outside lane. But I knew exactly what he was going to do, and he did it. Okay? Yeah, it's just a guess. It turns out I was 100% right, but yeah. Um, anyway, so then traffic starts slowing down. Oh, starts slowing down a fair amount. We're going from 65 down to 50. Okay, FSD wants to get out of here. You know, California Road Ranger, baby! Wants to move to the left desperately. Turns on turn signal, I cancel it. No, I'm staying right where I, I'm comfortable right here. Go up a few hundred feet. Turns on, comes back on again, cancel it. And then I'll just say, you know what? Forget this. Break on FSD off. Send a message. Okay, you win. No FSD. If your point was for me to turn off FSD, you pick the right approach. Okay? It's that simple. I mean, it's less than a mile to go before I turn into 24 hour anyway. So, anyway, that's what happened. All right, welcome home. 28 miles, 49 minutes, 
221 watt hours per mile. Really? Um, let's see, my trip has shown me it's 57 miles total trip. 13 kilowatt hours used. Oh, we used a little bit more today. But we used 227 watt hours per mile average energy. Okay. Yes, this is a mile three. All right, what do I say? What, what do I say? As usual, I go out the back entrance 24 hour and start going up Jollyville past Breaker. And eventually navigation catches up to where I'm going. Uh, I'm sure there's a way I could do a bunch of little series of things to make it all work. But I, I just don't want to bother with it. It's just the way it is. All right coming up onto uh, well let's start here turning on the research we go into the inside lane of course the inside lane is going to go away and there's a car coming up behind me not really pushing because they know to expect that I'll probably go to the middle lane too okay brake on the off move the car and as I'm rolling up I can see that there's a dump truck who's about ready to roll out into the, that middle lane, which will then be the inside lane. So slam to the outside lane, go around them. Uh, the car that's behind me just ignored them and kept going. Interesting, I don't know, whatever. Coming up onto 183, from, for some reason FSD, instead of choosing to go behind a van, where there is space, and there was space there. We could have gotten there. He wanted to pass the van. Okay, and there's space in front of him. You can do that, but because you forced him to wait, it took longer. Because guess what? He's getting out. He just wasn't smart enough to turn on his turn signal. Yeah, it happens. All right. Um, I don't, I feel like I turned on if it turned off FSD while on the front row, but I guess I didn't. Maybe it just put up the turn signal line and canceled it and FSD took it. Because it, it varies what FSD will do sometimes. Okay, whatever. As we're rolling up to the traffic light, FSD is on and it's a stale green. All right. Yeah, you're going slow. We're not going to make it. We're going to get a red light. But as we get closer, no, actually, it's staying green. Okay, foot on the accelerator, get the car moving, and we make it through on a green light. Okay? I, I don't know why FSD slows down so much here. He, 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 around traffic lights, he slows down. No reason for it. I don't know, whatever. Um, as we go down Anderson Mill, so we're turning on Anderson Mill Lane. We're in the outside lane. FSD declares he wants to be in the inside lane and moves. There's no traffic bothering us, so fine. Go ahead and do it. Um, so oddly enough, a few hundred feet down the road, he wants to be in the outside lane. Okay, again, no traffic problems. Go ahead and do it. It's just being bizarre. And he does that some. Oh, uh, to follow around, I gotta be in the inside lane. A few hundred feet later, oh, to follow around, I gotta be in the outside lane. Both lanes get to where we're going. Although in this case, the right lane is closed ahead. And knowing that there's traffic coming up, left turn single line, FSD don't want to do it, brake on FC off, move the car. Let's not run into the barricade and then figure out that you want to do something. Although today, his handling the barricades when he when he's not pressed, perfect, good. Move over far enough away where there's no problems. It's what you want. Don't wait till the last minute, because he has been waiting till the last minute. Okie dokie. Let's see if we can get back on track. So. Towards the end of, of the school zone out there on Anderson Mill, we fall into a magical Tesla 
speed zone of 25 miles an hour. At first, I just scroll up the wheel and say, no, we're just going to go. But then uh, uh, Tesla, the FST starts kind of bogging. Okay. So, if you're not familiar with this, they, Tesla presents a speed zone sign right here. And yes, it says 25. Did he read a 25 sign? No, he didn't. That's 45 here. But because I've scrolled it up to 45, I am 20 miles per hour in speed limit, so there's a blue outline surrounding that, that sign. And FSU, oh, you're speeding too much. Oh, I can't handle it. Break on SD off. That's the sign. I, I get it. You think it's 25 miles an hour here in this 45 zone. Therefore, you're having problems. I'll just drive. Okay? I mean, that, that's the thing, right? It's obviously map data because there's no 25 mile per hour speed sign there. There's not. I, I mean, I go through there all the time. Okay? Not every day, but out of, out of a week, I'm going through there maybe three times a week. At least two. Okay? No, there's no sign there. There hasn't been a sign there. They're just being stupid. Okay? If, if only they would pay attention to what's going on around them, Maybe we'd get somewhere. Okay, yeah, whatever. So, because I've turned off FSD, I just leave FSD off the rest of Anderson Mill. Don't bother with it. Tesla doesn't want me to use it. Otherwise, they would fix these problems. Yes, they're kind of busy trying to patch up the mess they've made. At least that's the way it looks. Okay. Okay. Onward upward charge coming out on 1431. It's uh, mixed traffic again, but most of the people are going slower. Okay. Eventually I find some space. So I start out in the inside lane, eventually I find some space in the outside lane, move to the outside lane, and kind of try to stay there. Let FSD stay in the outside lane. Don't do anything abrupt. Let him go slow as much as I can tolerate. Yeah, sometimes I put my phone on the accelerator. You betcha. Yeah, wait, when you're going down a hill at 50 in the 55 zone and there's a pickup breathing down your neck, you don't want to go slow. On the other hand, if he's tailgate me, I will go slow. That's the basic rule. One of Ray's number one rules is, if you're tailgating me, I will slow down. No choice. Okay, whatever. Uh, coming up. So there's a there's a Camry who's going like, oh, I'm going to go by you. I'm going so fast. It's a Toyota. What do you want? And when when we're in the 50 zone, he isn't quite sure whether he wants to pass me or not. And to be fair to him, I'm also going like, why are you going so slow? I'm putting my phone in the to keep the car moving. You just have to. Oh, what, what you, yeah. So anyway, when we enter the Jonestown 45 mile per hour area, yeah, all of a sudden, Mr. Camry is falling, is falling back behind me a little bit. Not completely falling behind because you don't want to be embarrassed too badly by a Tesla. Right? So, as long as he's staying back there, okay, give it a little accelerator, put on the left turn signal, and FSC accepts that input. We move into the inside lane. Okay? Go up the hill. There's a BMW. It's coming up like they're going to pass me. But then they realize, oh, the right lane's closed ahead and there's a barricade. Yeah, duh. Yeah, whatever. Um, go through the construction zone. It's just, I don't, who's in charge of safety? That's the question I always want to ask. Who's in charge of safety in this construction zone? 
Oh my goodness. You got people who were standing, leaning on the barrels. A nurse car is coming. Yeah, they're down to 45 miles an hour, but that doesn't mean you get to be stupid about your safety, does it? Surely being on the other side of the construction equipment would be a safer place to be. I would think, but what do I know? I'm not in charge of their safety. Okay. Um, as we come up on the magical Tesla traffic light at West Street Park Road, we do slow down ever so briefly. And, and I don't know if I said it already, but I have noticed one thing about these flashing yellows. Going eastbound, there's only two of them. Going westbound, there's three of them because one's for that turn lane. Okay, so we're slowing down a bit. In the meantime, okay, brake on FC off. In the meantime, there is a guy driving a Ram pickup. Actually, there's three vehicles. They, they, all three of them have decided they should go in front of me and Mr. Ram pickup as fast as he's accelerating for Ram pickup is making it obvious it's a slow mover. Okay, you have to brake, hold on, wait for it, wait for him. Maybe someday he'll figure out that he's going somewhere. And eventually he does. Once he hits the downhill, he goes. But knowing that your vehicle is a slow mover, maybe you shouldn't pull out in front of faster cars. Just think about it, okay? I, I get it. If you're a Ram driver, you may not be so concerned about safety. It seems to fit that category of, or that group of people from what I've seen. What? Prove me wrong. Show me your safety records. Oh, wait. You know, if you were Tesla, you'd have a yearly report indicating how safe your vehicles are. How few accidents you get into. Does Dodge have anything like that? Or, I'm sorry, not Dodge. Ram. Does Ram have anything like that? Yeah, I didn't think so. NHTSA has something like that, but maybe not broken down by manufacturer. Okay. But they have some overall numbers, which Tesla does compare to. Okay. Go look them up. A Tesla without running autopilot or FSD is far safer over a number of accidents per mile driven. Or actually, number of miles driven between accidents. Tesla's far safer. And that's without FSD. Yes, I'm over here bad mouthing FSD, but let's face it, FSD is pretty damn good most of the time. Okay. Um, as usual, when we come up to where one lane separates into two, Tesla doesn't respect the turn signal, brake on us, yeah, I've moved the car myself. And when I move the car, there's a BMW that goes flying by. We're still in the 45 zone, right? But Jonestown doesn't have any police officer out here to enforce today. In fact, they're hiring. <laughs> okay. You, you can't keep people in there. I don't know. Maybe if you bought some Teslas, you could, you could save some money and afford to pay your officers more and keep them. Okay. I don't know. I mean, other, other departments, other police departments around the country have said basically those words. They save so much money by having Teslas, they can afford to pay more or get another police officer. Think about it. They can get another police officer. That's how much money they're saving. Okay, and actually their police department was, so it was a particular one. I'm guessing they're a little bit bigger than uh, Lago Vista, but not much bigger. Because I think I've seen at least five or six different police cars. And that's about how many Teslas this group has. Oh, but that's somebody who's thinking about money. Not 
political points for how you look, but how effectively you can run your department. Yeah. Okay, whatever. Peace and Army. Um, once the BMW goes by, there's another car coming up, and we're getting to the point where we're going to have to make, make our shift to the left lane anyway. So I make the shift to the left lane. Okay. Um, turn on to Loman Ford. Invoke FSD. Actually, he doesn't bother me. Okay, I guess he doesn't bother me. Or maybe he turned on the turn signal once and I turned it off. I don't remember which one it is. It's pretty uneventful. So there you go. We're just cruising down the road. I mean, yes, we're behind slow traffic, but that's what this time of day is. And yes, I have a Mustang uh, GT, whatever they are. The gas ones. I have, a, I have one of those guys following me. And actually, he follows me all the way down to American. So he's going further west than I am. Okay, whatever. So the good news is today when we pull in, when we come up to my house, the car does indeed pull into the driveway. So the few days where he didn't want to pull into the driveway must have been an anomaly. Okay, there you go. Um, for those of you who want something different, so yesterday I saw a Chevy Equinox EV. I think that was yesterday. Today I saw a Chevy Blazer EV. So they're out. You can get them if you really want to pay more to get your car made in Mexico. I right, check it out. I know the Maquis made in Mexico. I'm pretty sure the Equinox is made in Mexico. I thought the Blazer was too. Not that there's anything wrong with that necessarily. But if that's what's important to you, so be it. What? 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 Yes, the car I'm sitting in right now, Grandpa, was made in Fremont, California. Although, to some of you Texans, that may not be part of the United States of America. I get it. <laughs> okay? But it was made in Fremont, California. The batteries are produced by Panasonic over in uh, Sparks, Nevada. Now, I don't know what all minerals they used. There, there was no restriction back. This is 2020. Okay. My Model Y over here was made in Austin. Okay. So, it's made completely in America. The batteries are also made by Panasonic in Sparks, Nevada. They actually use part of the uh, Tesla, Tesla factory out there as their floor space to make these batteries. So there you go. You own an American car? Really? Buy a Tesla. Okay, whatever. Peace and harmony. Onward, upward charge. All right, so for our ice comparison, I mean, it's not the... So there was a Porsche Cayenne didn't really do anything it's just that he sh they showed up and you're like oh it'd be interesting to do a comparison to that one all right so the overall trip today had 13 kilowatt hours used which breaks out to a dollar 43 of energy so to be fair to these poor guys let's just say it's a half gallon it's close enough anyway all right so half a gallon means they go eight and a half miles so from my house, you could drive out to the Whitestone storage. Yeah. And you'd be out of gas. Okay. So there you go. Mileage wise. So I'm sorry. I didn't say it gets 17 miles per gallon city. They didn't have a combined and I didn't use the highway. What? You want to use the highway? Go ahead. You, you know, you know what? good that's going to do you. They're going to get through Cedar Park and they're still going to run out of gas going one way. They're not going to cover the 57 miles I covered today. Okay. 
However, I sat, sat, sat there and thought about, well, first of all, it's a Porsche. And second of all, it's an SUV. Oh, maybe I should think of it in the reverse order. So, hey, I wonder how it compares to my Model Y, which is also an SUV. All right, so with the seats up, the, basically the trunk space, right? 27 cubic feet in that Cayenne. The Model Y, 33 more square feet. With the seats folded down, you would think with that big squared off back, the Cayenne would have a lot more space, right? It has 60 square feet. Model Y, 76 square feet. Despite the fact that it has that curved roof. Yes, the Model Y has beaten this Porsche, this Cayenne. Okay, now, you, nobody expects an SUV to go fast, right? All right, so zero to 60 for the Cayenne. 5.7 seconds, which is pretty decent. You know, but better than that Ram I saw today. The Model Y, 4.4 seconds. Was it 4.4 seconds? I guess that's a dual motor. I hope that's what it is. Is it? I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't check to see if that was the dual motor or the performance. But whatever. It, it still gives you the idea that that Porsche, despite all the good things you can say about it, the Model Y blows it away in the, in the categories I just listed. Now, I'm pretty sure the top end speed is higher in the Cayenne. Okay. I'm pretty sure if you fill it up with gas, it can probably go further, although I, I didn't look at that. What? No, I don't want to go into that, okay? Or maybe I'll put in a comment later about it. So, there you go. And, and what I find interesting is when they compute the cargo space, they're not including the sub trunk. What? Yes, my Model Y has a sub, has a trunk under the trunk. You pull up the board and there's more, more space to put stuff. And, oh, by the way, it has a frunk, basically a trunk in front of the car. So there's a lot of space you can put to use. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Onward up or charge.